can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles so now you're on a path and then but you're still eating pretty much the same as everybody eats uh, the light bulb hasn't really gone on you're just you you've now come back to what we're calling normal um, and then how did you go all the way off the other end of the scale to we'll call it super normal well i wouldn't really i don't know if you'd call it normal i guess you would call how i was eating like when i stopped drinking normal in this day and age because people eat some pretty horrific stuff i mean i was eating some pretty sickening stuff i would sit there and eat a whole cheesecake and you know a whole lasagna because what I would do is I would stop one addiction and start up another addiction. Well, this, so is a, this is a fairly common approach, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. With addicts, that's what you do. You repeat one addiction with the next addiction. So food became my next addiction. And um, I would eat, you know. Well, it could have been coffee and cigarettes. I was a smoker. I was still smoking at this stage. So, yes, I've been a very unhealthy girl. Um, I didn't give up smoking for a, year, a few years down the track. So um, I was still smoking, eating a lot of junk food, um, would make dinners at home that I thought were healthy for my children. Um, and But that wasn't enough for me. When I'd finish up working in the evening, I'd call into McDonald's and pig out on McDonald's as well. So I was having like normal dinner and then McDonald's at like 10, 11 o'clock at night. So that was, yeah, um, my diet was dreadful, absolutely dreadful. Um, 2010, um, so seven years ago, that was sort of a real um, pivotal moment for me. I went to Las Vegas. And that was when I realised that I had an eating problem <laughs> because I ate a lot there. Vegas has a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, Vegas is like the home of food. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's pretty crazy food in Vegas. Absolutely. And you can't make I, a dent. You can't mm, make a dent in what's available. No. Oh, it's, it's just gluttony plus. And then they just keep refilling you and refilling you and... Oh, it was just yeah, and I was heavily overweight. And so do you know how much? Do you know? Do you know what your peak weight had gotten to at that point? Yeah, I was eighty six kilos. I'm not a hundred percent sure what that was in pounds. Sorry, I work yeah, in the. That's not, that, that's not huge by any stretch. I mean, well, no, it's it only it's only like one hundred and eighty five pounds. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, compared compared to some weights, definitely. But for me, I had never really had a weight problem. I started to put my weight on through boozing and binge eating when I wasn't drinking because I never ate when I drank, and then I put on even more weight through binge eating. And um, then I started to make changes to my diet, but I was nowhere near where I am now. That's for sure. It was just the start, <laughs> baby steps. So it was just the start do you of remember, the journey. Do you remember who influenced you to even make any of those first steps in diet, or was do you think it came from yourself somehow? Um. Oh, look, I had tried dieting even when I was drinking, but not in a good way. I used to buy like those speed tablets from the chem, you know from my doctor, um, I would try doing all, fr I would actually try doing raw diets, but I had no idea, but I knew in my head fruit and veggies were healthy, but I'd make a, a little bowl of fruit for breakfast and then a little salad for lunch and by dinner, of course, I was absolutely starving, so it didn't work wonders and then, of course, two days' time on off the rails drinking so you know, that sort of got that all out of control so yeah i was i was messed up big time <laughs> i mean i'm laughing now thinking of about it because it's just like wow how can someone be messed so messed up with their health but um so i've always you know those yo-yo dieting you know try all these things and whatever um i did then um, move into a large weight loss company and did their sort of calorie deficit diet. 
um, which I was successful at. Anyone can lose weight in a calorie deficit diet if you stick to it, of course. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, I lost 26 kilos um, with that. And, um, I was, and then I started working for the company. I worked for the company for three years. So I was a huge promoter, you know, this program, you know, in my opinion, it's, it was the ants' pants that saved my life. And then I started to realise, because I was coaching so many people, I mean, sometimes I would see up to a 1,000 different people a week because I'd host big meetings and whatever, and I'd realise that there was just this roundabout that people weren't getting off. And for me, because I've got this mindset that if I'm going to do something, I do something. At first, I couldn't understand it. I think, no, I can do it. Anyone can do it, you know. And I started to realise, no, and then I, I found out that only 5% of people ever lose weight on these programs, and out of that 5%, only 10% ever keep it off. And I started to search further, and I said, you know what? got to find something I've got to find the key to the kingdom so to speak and things were starting to fall off the rails for me because my body was starving I was starving for nutrition I was hungry I was so hungry and I started binge eating so then I would binge eat and then I would over exercise to um, compensate and then I would push my calories back even further um, so that I would keep my weight off because ultimately you know that's what women do well, that's what I did anyway. And um, I, I then came across the documentary Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. And I did a 30-day juice fast and I felt amazing. I was like, wow, my God, I can actually survive on juice. It was pretty amazing stuff and I felt great and my skin was just glowing and I was just, it was just, wow, this is so amazing. And I wanted to tell everyone, I'm like, you've just got to do this. And everyone's going, yeah, yeah. she's living on juice. What's wrong with her? And then I started to, you know, search more and more. And I thought there's something to plants. There's something to it. And I guess I started to realise that I didn't need all this protein and I didn't need all these other foods. And so I moved into plant-based diet. And but then I sort of went a little bit off the rails and started um, having higher fat. So that sort of started causing problems for me, and I started breaking out in um, you know bad skin because I was still eating a lot of grains, and uh, everything started to flare up. And then this is the crunch point. This is the greatest part. I started using Instagram and I started trying to work out the hashtags and I kept seeing this 80-10-10 hashtag. Then what's this 80-10-10? Oh, everyone's doing it. I'll just do the hashtag. I had no idea what I'm doing and I'm hashtagging 80-10-10. How funny. <laughs> and then I started to delve in and look at the hashtag. I'm thinking, oh, it's all only just raw fruits and veg. Oh, and I started delving, and then I found your book, and this is how the magic started. Instagram. Instagram. Well, I mean, at least it's well-named. Yeah. I, I, I actually thought about naming my daughter Insta at one point. You know, yeah, why not? Insta, Instagram. I mean, she would have been, would have been perfect. <laughs> um, so then you tried 80 10 10 that's a success story i'm not going to dwell on that with you uh really so much because you dwell on that for people and you're doing a fine job of it um and we're not here really so much to convince people uh i think certainly not by by banging them over the head with them with that message I, i'd like to find out more a little bit about what makes you tick and and um, for instance, like, what would you say today motivates you? Myself. Where, where are you coming up with your motivation now? Myself. And this is something I actually preach to people. Um, you have to be captain of your cheer squad. If you're not captain of your cheer squad, no one else is going to be. And, um, I learned that years ago, um, because, 
it's so easy to fall into ruts and if I'm dependent on any particular person to be you know to pull me up and you know whatever when they're not around then I'm just going to fall into a heap so I can honestly say that I am my greatest motivator um, I do get motivated by other people don't get me wrong um, but I have to rely on me um, because I'm my own best friend um, everything and if I can't be my own best friend I can't help other people and I can't help myself so I would honestly say not in an egotistical way but I am my greatest motivator and my greatest inspiration because I look at how far I've come and I say you know what you're pretty awesome you've done a huge it's job a, and, a lot of people and, never got out of that hole that you were in yeah and um, I am my own motivator. I motivate myself a lot. Um, I do a lot of um, self-love techniques and work with my, myself a lot because um, I have to keep going. And the more, um, I guess, the more I'm out there on social media and the more um, I've become a role model for people, I know how important it is to keep myself motivated. I take it very seriously um, that, People are looking to me for guidance and looking to me, you know, as a bit of a role model, so to speak. And I do take it seriously. So, you feel a responsibility? Absolutely. I do. I feel responsible um, all the time because I think when you put yourself out there in the public eye and you say, hey, this is what I'm doing, you have a responsibility to the safety of other people that are following you. People start following you because they want to grow, they want to learn, they may be motivated by you, they might be slightly inspired by you or whatever it is. And I feel I've got a responsibility to... Um, be responsible and share the right information. I'm very cautious of that. Um, I'm very cautious of what I put out there and I'm very cautious of what I allow myself to be, you know, be shared in my social media, so to speak, mm -hmm. because I, I do care for other people and um, that's probably why I put so much time into me because if I can put time into me and love me enough, then I've got so much more time and energy to give to others. If that really makes sense, I just it it's just it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, uh, but it also it also opens up another line of questioning, which is you're putting yourself on the firing line. You're putting yourself. Uh, out there, if you will, you're putting yourself in a leadership role. Uh, you're taking responsibility, um, which often means that you're not making everybody happy. Uh, you're willing to say things that not everybody's ready to hear, and and you will take some flack yeah. uh, because you're taking a stand. And yeah. most most people. I'm going to say it up front, you know, most people aren't ready to take a stand. And, yeah. and when somebody does, uh, it upsets people. They, they want to see if you're a paper tiger or if you really stand for something. Yeah. Uh, so at that point, I have to ask, why? Why do you want to be a leader? Well, I, I mean, I've always had... I've always been a leader, I believe, most of my life, even when I was a teenager on a rat bag and people would ring my mum and say, your daughter's a rat bag and, and she's leading my daughter astray. And my mum would say, well, at least she's the leader. Um, and, you know, but I think on a serious note, um, I've been given a second chance of life and I took it. You know, we all get second chances given to us and third and fourth, but not all of us take them. Not all of us realise that that's a window that we've been given an opportunity to move into something better, something greater, to leave, you know, the past behind. And I want to give back. I, you know, 
I'm strong enough to give back now. I mean, I wouldn't have been strong enough 10 years ago. I wasn't strong enough to give back to anybody, but I'm a strong person. I call myself an overcomer. Um, and, you know, for me, I get such joy out of watching people grow. Um, I love watching people change their life. You know, you get them, you know, you wake up in the morning and I have messages from people, you know, you're changing my life. Um, you know, it may not be to the extreme, you know, people call it the extreme. They may not be where I am and I'm not maybe where other people are, you know, but but through watching me, they they say, you know what, you've made a difference in my life. You. I'm, I'm thinking I've changed this or changed that. That gives me great pleasure. That gives me joy to know that people are better in their life because I'm prepared to put myself out there and tell my life, the good, the bad and the ugly, and some of it's been pretty ugly, and I put it out there, not because to say, you know what, well, my life's been so crap, blah, 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 but I like to show people that all things are possible because if someone like me can change my life, anyone can. Uh, I wrote something very similar just today, just responding. Somebody had asked me a question. I go, look, you know, I just want to, I just want to show people that it's possible um, yeah. and to have hope. But you said you called yourself an overcomer and yeah. you have overcome a lot. Um, obviously some of it, you just kind of fell into and some of it, you created for yourself but you got yourself out of it and and you do deserve pats on the back and a lot of a lot of recognition for that uh what would you say in the past what would you say was your biggest accomplishment my two children um some people might say wow you had them so young but they're still my greatest accomplishment um, I love them. I'm proud of them. Um, if it wasn't for them, I'd probably be dead. So, you know, um, they bring instead, me... They, instead, they just gave me their hairs. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I could have been dead. And I know that. I look at... I, I know how bad my life was. Um, but they're my greatest accomplishment. They're my greatest joy. Um, they're just beautiful kids and I love them and I'm so grateful through everything they went through in their childhood that they still love me and um, they're proud of me. So, yeah, my kids. I, I did something right. <laughs> yeah, I love them to death. I can